Morning, everyone. Okay. Welcome to this Nationwide Platforms webinar on um, low level access in the period fit out sector. Uh, just before I hand over to Matt Parfit and Marina Torres, I just want to let you know that if you have any questions, please pop them in the questions section as opposed to chat, and we'll come back to those at the end. Right, I'll just hand over to you then, Matt. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, Oops, if I just go back. Right, so to introduce myself. So my name is Matt Parfit. I'm head of sales for the strategic accounts team within Nationwide Platforms. Yep, I've been here a long while. Uh, I, I've, I've had my exposure, my fair exposure to different sectors. Um, uh, yeah, I've, I've delivered a number of these talks, including masterclasses over the last year. And I, I do, I'm a self-confessed product expert, egghead, whatever you want to call me. But this is something which I, I take a lot of time to understand. Uh, and, and, and and offer advice and support to my customers on. Um, Marina, do you want to introduce yourself? Of course. Thanks, Matt. Good morning, everyone. My name is Marina Torres, and I'm the Global Key Account Manager at Bravi Platforms. Bravi is a manufacturer of aerial platforms specialized in uh, low-level access. He's actually a real pioneer in this field, with the first aerial platform being launched back in 1995. And, um, well, although I was not with the company at that time, <laughs> I've been with them for 17 years. So been with the industry for 17 years. Excellent. Thanks, Marina. So um, uh, I'll just give you a bit of a, 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 a brief understanding as to, to, to why we're doing this yeah and if you've joined any of the previous calls you'll understand that we we don't just talk about solutions for the sake of it we talk about solutions because we know there's risk out there yeah um, and it, you can look anywhere you want to um, in terms of some of the statistics which are are, are reported across many different uh, channels uh, mainly from uh, from the HSC but also from IPATH uh, as to where risks uh, reside yeah, and you can see down the bottom left there where uh, where we know up to 2013 where some of the primary risks uh, were, were sitting and that's falls, uh, overturn, uh, trapping and, and, and collapse. Um, and if you look to the, uh, the, the I guess, the, the, the second bullet point, yeah, that's the, the 29, 2019 report, which was updated by IPAF um, uh, a couple of years ago. But yeah, it, it took, it took uh, I think it was 2016 through to 2018. Uh, in terms of some of those, uh, in, you know, some of those primary MUB fatalities, and then that's been further updated um, uh, to to 2020 the, at, at the year end, which came out only last month or so. And you can see there the the, the statistics on on fatalities. It's clearly an issue that where, where things aren't happening quite as as you'd expect when when working in a platform at height. Uh, and if you took the the most up to date data, which is the, the 2020 report from from IBAF, you can see now that electrocution is one of the largest killers out there, followed by falls, entrapment, and, and overturn. Yeah, and that's not to say that you know uh, electrocution is any more of an issue than it was on the previous report necessarily, uh, because the data that IPATH get now is that much richer. But what it does point towards is is is, is some clear areas that we all need to be acutely aware of um, when when trying to to implement like behavioural solutions. Uh, uh, as well as technical solutions to help protect our, our, our people who we put in the platforms, because that's the, the, the main thing, so they go home at night. Um, and these are just some of the areas that, uh, that we, will, we will focus on. Um, but obviously, this is a, a session on the interior sector specifically. Yeah, and not that you'll only work at low levels when it comes to uh, interiors, but that's probably the mainstay uh, of, of the work you're doing. Um, and some people, I'm not saying anyone on this call, but some people will consider working at low level. Now, you know that, that that's that's fairly safe. Uh, that's not, you know, where where the where the predominant risk comes from. Uh, well, you know, I don't think that's necessarily correct. And if you weren't or you were sure, you know, I, I want to make that really clear now. Yeah, you know, we, we 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 know that issues happen at low levels just as much as they do, um, you know, at 40 meters. Uh, and, and as you can see there from the top left, you know, 60 percent of those more uh, those, those major fall related injuries do do happen below head height. So it's something to be aware of just as much whether you're at one to two meters uh, or whether you're at 43 or anything in, in, in between. Now, 
like I said, there's plenty of documentations out there, plenty of documents out there, sorry, which push for better choices when, when selecting your, your tool for task. Um, and low level access is clearly a, a critical part to that. Um, but something to add on here, you like I've already said to you, yeah, an issue can happen at, at two meters as much as it can at 42 meters, for example. And you actually don't have to have the, the machine elevated anywhere uh, for an issue to occur. So if you look at that blue platform in the middle, um, that's a that's a, as an example I've used on many different talks before where someone was driving a platform of this kind um, and they were concentrated too much on the wheels, not on the obstruction, which is just about to come towards them. And they got trapped between the uh, the, the handrails of that low level platform and the overhead obstruction that they, they, they didn't. Uh, thankfully, they didn't pass away as a result of the industry, but they came away with some fairly life changing, you know, uh, you know, impacts. So, you know, if there's any one message you take from this one slide is that the issues can happen when the machine isn't even elevated. As long as you are up in the basket and you are moving, there's a risk of 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 an issue of a of a you know there is a, a safety risk that you need to be uh, considerate of. So, how do we help? you know, as, as an interior contractor or someone responsible for interiors contractors, how do we help you um, make the best choices? Because yeah, we don't provide every single method of access in the in the business, in the industry. Um, we're, we're a mechanical access firm. So, you know, I try and make this as, as objective and as helpful as I can. Uh, and you might have dialed into a previous session where we showed this, and I'll show this as many times as I think necessary for the message to get across. You know, you'll all need a method, uh, a structure, for selecting uh, the, the the right platform, the right method of working at height. Now, this one on here is 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 one that I've used from a, a customer of mine um, a, a few years ago. It's their access decision tree and it's their methodology for justifying which form of access they use to get to their area at height, depending on the job they're doing, the duration, the risk, and, and everything else under their RAMs. Uh, and you can see mechanical access is one part of that. Um, and that's where we come in, um, where you've decided or where we've assisted you decide on, on the right form of access. Um, so you make the right choice because um, things, you know, that things move on. You know, last year's solution might not be this year's. Uh, other you know, um, providers may have less or more solutions in their in, in their fleet range. So you need to make yourself as aware as possible and use the people that know what they're doing. Um, uh, they've got the expertise to offer uh, that 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 advice either face to face as a site survey or over the phone or with the right information available to you to to to, to look and review um and you know just as a as an additional question down here you know whether you're using a ladder a tower low level access or a step uh, do you have do you have experts in in the field who you go to, to to give you that best advice yeah like i said we're an expert in low level access i certainly aren't in steps yeah so who do you go to um as to as to giving you that best advice, and if you don't have a, a, an immediate answer to that because it's a supplier who's got thirty thousand different products and, and a small amount of knowledge on either, uh, and it's a, an activity that presents risk, which working at height definitely does, then perhaps you need to think differently about that. You know, all I'm doing is asking questions, and if you're confident in your method at the moment, then brilliant. If not, we can help you. Um, so. Obviously, mechanical access or low-level access, which is what we're talking about today, is um, is, is one bona fide method. You know, in our view, it's one of the safest methods. It doesn't provide a solution for every problem, though, which is why you need to look at the job and and, and take stock on what uh, your best option is. But when it comes to low-level, um, we would certainly advocate that they're that they're used because they're easy to to operate. They're simple. They're incredibly productive. Uh, you know, they're quick not just to operate, but to also to set up. You don't have to put no stabilizing legs down. You don't have to build the handrail. Um, uh, there's no manual handling to get the, the, the machine in place necessarily. Uh, you just drive it into position, enter the platform, check your risks around you, and then operate. Um, they're also very efficient, and you'll see some examples of that during the presentation. They're incredibly safe, whether that be the handrails, the tow boarding, uh, you know, the, or, or other technology which is built into the platform uh, to, to mitigate for known risks you know, or to make the job more, more productive. And, you know, quite clearly, when you don't have stabilizing legs, they take up less space down the corridors. So you can see there's some, some clear advantages to use them. You just need to know which one. Uh, and, and, and that low level access range for this, this sector will be split into two 
different areas. You've got your push around platforms, which was clearly a platform you will um, you will walk up to, you push into place, and it might be one that you wind to height. It might be one that you press a button and it elevates under electric. Uh, but if, as long as it's push around, it comes under that PAV uh, iPath uh, category, and then you move into the the, the, the fully uh, electrified solutions that, that that will drive and that will elevate under under power, and they come under 3A, which is the same as a scissor lift because they are they're vertical uh, and they're self-driven. You know, they 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 drive under power. Uh, but again, I'll, I'll I'll make the point to say that getting the right tool for task is, is is important, and you can use the service that we provide for site surveys. You can use the product guides, the websites. There's there's many different uh, methods and, and and means of gaining access to the products in the fleet to make your best decision. Because just within our low level access range, we've got 13 options. Yeah, uh, and they'll all be right for 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 a different type of solution, different type of challenge. Sorry. So. That's my, my my opening gambit. Why we're we doing it? Yeah, you know how how you as a as as an access specify user can, can go about selecting a tool for task, and what the benefits necessarily of using a, a of a low level access platform is. So I don't break this down into some of the, the considerations um, as to where these these units can really help do something better, safer, more productive for you. So. Uh, the use of low level access you can see some quite clear images here of, of of the type of tasks they may be used for yeah and they may not be the right image for for the task you'll be doing today or or, or next week but you know it, this is this is a, a general consideration you know is, is the job going to be one off uh, is it an activity you repeat you know what are time scales what are pressures around that and what are materials you need to carry and the personnel you need to put at height yeah they'll all drive towards what the uh, the, the, the platform uh, that's most or not relevant to the job you're doing you know um and you know whether it's a, 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 a you know a push around or a, or a, a you know a self-driven platform they will often be much more productive often three times faster uh, than traditional forms of access and we've got plenty of case studies that we can share with anyone uh, that, that, that that validate that now if anyone wants any case studies all they need to do is put on the message group uh, to matt and then we can share that but yeah it, it, it's been it's been you know, recorded and it is something easy that we can share. Um, some of these platforms will also drive at full height. Yeah, some of them don't, some of them will drive at full height. So again, you need to be aware of that. Uh, clearly there's no setup or assembly. Um, you do have different options on working space. So the one you've got in the middle there and on the right, and to be fair on the left, that they, they've got double extending decks on them. You've got platforms that also have single extending decks and you've got platforms that don't. Uh, some will work outdoors. Uh, and some will work only indoors. And again, that's your uh, responsibility to ensure you, you you get the right platform. But again, how can we help with that? Well, that's by having a conversation to make sure that we understand what you're doing uh, so we can give you that right advice, not, not just on the task, but the environment that that machine is subjected to. And there's a few examples down there, like I said, of machines that will drive at height with the different deck dimensions and, and a few other pieces. So, you know, it just gives you a, a flavor really of, uh, of, of, of what's uh, available and what's versatile to a different scenario. Okay, the next part is on ground conditions. You know, if you're anything to view of MUPS and, and the use and planning thereof, I'd be very surprised if this wasn't something that comes across your desk on a, on a daily, weekly basis, but again, um, you know, the low level access platforms do come into their own in, in, in respect to this uh, because these platforms are so um, light, lightweight, or they, 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 they subject the floor to uh, low floor loadings, low pressures, because yeah, every floor will have a weight limit. And if it's a raised access flooring, you know, then that's where these, the, the, these sort of smaller versions of the, of, of the range come into their own. Yeah. Um, you can see, to be honest, if you look to the, the, the far right hand side there, you've got a comparison between one of our low level access platforms that, you know, that Marina represents, you know, the Leonardo, compared to a, a standard 19 foot slab scissor. You can see the max wheel load um, uh, for each of those platforms and then overlaid against what a medium grade or heavy grade uh, flooring uh, might have the, the limit of, and we've had this from certain customers, yours might be different, but this is what we've been told is is the limit to a medium grade, uh, you know, raised access floor compared to a heavy grade. You can see that the 19 foot scissor 
is not going to be relevant, uh, you know, not going to be safe for use on, on that grading of flooring, which is why the, the image down the bottom there has been dropped in because that's what's happened. You know, that's what happens. Sorry. So you can see with, with the low level access options we have uh, and the advice and support and data, we can make sure that, uh, you know, that the, the products are not only used properly, but they're used safely within the limits of, of what the, 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 the environment um, tasks you to, uh, to, to determine. Um, uh, other things to consider with ground conditions is not just the, the, the load limits, it's also about you know the, the terrain, uh, the slope, the distance you need to drive that machine to get to your area. They'll all determine the, a, a more suitable machine. Obviously indoors and outdoors, we've said that already, uh, and then you, the impact on, on finish and delicate floors. And I don't just mean that the the, the load limits, but also you know, the non-marking tyres and, 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 and machines that are susceptible or less susceptible to creating uh, damage on, on, on tiled areas. Okay, uh, the next part uh, you know, to, 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 to evaluate is more on space uh, and control. So with uh, pretty much all of our low level access platforms here, but specifically the ones we've got in the image, you've got very compact dimensions there, which allow you know, you to get into doorways like the right hand side image there, whilst you might have to duck, uh, that machine will happily get through that 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 that, that tight space. Um, but it might be width, it might be the, the turning radius that you've got restrictions over, it might be lifts or doorways or entrances you need to get around. Um, you, you need a machine that can position itself, you know, uh, sort of accurately and with good levels of precision. Uh, and obviously uh, an agile platform that can get into all those different areas. And again, we've got a lot of options there that, that can do that job for you. But again, it starts with the conversation. It has to you, you have to talk to us for us to be able to give you that support. You can use the product guide, but it won't tell you everything you need to know about the, that machine. Obviously, that would be a, 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 an incredibly big document then. Uh, so that's where the conversation and the use of the expertise, which I've talked about, uh, can come in come in handy. Uh, and then the final part to this is about, you know, safety, you know, risk mitigation. So what other areas can we you talk about where low level can, can reduce that risk or eliminate it where possible? Well, in terms of slips and trips, well, every every one of our low level access platforms is tow boarded and handrailed. And, you know, many of the times the steps getting into the platforms are very low. So it, again, it, it decreases the risk of a, of a slip or a fall by having a step, which is something you have to step up. Uh, into you know rather than stepping almost towards a uh, low level um, you've also got you know risks that you can help with uh, in terms of setup yeah so I, I, don't, I don't just mean actually physically setting up the, 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 the tower although that, that that process is definitely you know handling materials but also what you're going to do with materials when you're, you're at height and do you have the space and, and the compact dimensions to be able to, to manage that material you've also got the reduced risk of hand trap um, you know through having again to you know to to, to use the um the, the spanners and wherever else that that will, will present certain risks uh, when you're working at height um and then no loose components yeah the, the, the machine comes as one there's not a tube or a, a, a fitting or something you have to have spares of the machine just drives into place and it goes up to height uh, without anything uh with anything that the machine provides which could fall off um, you've also got posture and load management and the easiest way to see that if you look at that silhouette on the right hand side when you're building a scaffold you're clearly going to have a lot of demand to to, to, to bend to twist to, to build you know, which clearly you don't have that with a low level access platform and also because they are limited to certain heights you are probably going to have to overreach at some point to do a job whereas again with a platform that you can amend by the inch in terms of height um, there's no need for bending. You just amend the, the position of the platform uh, to, to, to get into the uh, the area where you need to. Um, also, space uh, overall dimensions is, is certainly a, a benefit uh, and, and a risk mitigator. You know, something which is taking up less space is going to be less of, of an obstruction and a trip hazard. Um, side force. Now, everything has to be built uh, to the, the PAS 250. Uh, standards or you know the, the side force limits within a self-propelled platform so again these platforms all come uh, you know to fit for purpose uh, and, and they don't need any additional legs to, to to meet that standard so again that's that's something which takes up space um, they will all 
prevent surfing at height and I don't mean surfboards I mean when you're up height up at height there's no way that you can drag yourself along there's no way someone can push you along from the base you, you either can't move along because it's a, a push around platform or it's something which you drive under your own steam it's not something where someone can can push you along from the ground uh, which definitely creates risks of, of falls and overturn. And then the final part on here is just about rescue. You know, it, it, when, when you're not looking at a low level access platform, what's your rescue plan for, for, for bringing someone down uh, if they've got, you know, health conditions at height, which on any of those solutions, you know, I don't know what the solution is, but, you know, I, I know for a, for a fact in any of our platforms, you've got, you know, uh, two methods of bringing a machine down, which will bring that person down to the ground level, which makes it a lot easier to rescue. So again, food for thought, uh, as to how these platforms not only enable you to do a job uh, quickly, productively, you know, with less hassle to the, the, the working space around you, but also a dam site safer, uh, which ultimately does have a cost impact as well. So I'm now going to hand over to my colleague Marina and uh, over to you to talk about some sector driven innovations. Thank you, Matt. Well, yes, sector-driven innovation is, could very well be a, a recap of who we are. For a relatively small uh, manufacturing company as Bravi, paying attention and listening to customer concern, listening to their need has always made all the difference for us. Um, it's really a, part, a big part of who we are and why we do what we do. Um, let me tell you a very short story. It was the end of the 70s when Pierino Bravi, the founder and current owner of Bravi Platforms, started his career as a contractor. As a contractor, um, actually a fit out uh, an interior contractor specialized in ceilings and insulating material. And the very uh, simple reason why he then decided to uh, become a um, manufacturer of aerial platform was that he was tired to waste, um, you know, uh, money and uh, stumbling on uh, on ladders or scaffoldings, not being productive. So he decided to design a vertical must lift, and he tailored that uh, to match his own crew needs on site. This was back in. In 1995, but that experience uh, still uh, has always had a profound impact on our company company culture. When um, when working at height is uh, at low height in particular, it's concerned there are several ways of uh, getting the job done. Uh, our role and also uh, the rental company's role is to uh, provide the customer with the right solution for the task, with that one solution that truly ticks all the boxes. So the one solution that will allow them to work safely and more product productively without sacrificing any um, comfort, the workers' of comfort and site efficiency along the way. And speaking of uh, bespoke um, solution, uh, the, this accessory that you can see uh, in the slide is a great example of that. Uh, this accessory is called Solo Gyps, is our best-selling accessory for our vertical mass lift, the Leonardo HD. And it's a very simple and intuitive drywall lift attachment that can be mounted exclusively on, on that model. And this product has been on the market since uh, 2011, but only in the past year it has uh, been uh, really getting its momentum. And uh, this was due to uh, COVID-19 and all these new uh, health and safety um, rules about social distancing. The pandemic has uh, taught us all uh, the, the need to have as many tasks autom automated as possible, to have workers possibly be totally self-sufficient, to maintain you know, social distancing without compromising productivity and still be able to keep it up with a deadline. Um, the Leonardo, the combo between the Leonardo and Solo Gyps uh, plastic board lift, it, that's exactly what what they what they do. Uh, I think we do have a video as well on the um, 
on this accessory. We do. Can you see the uh, screen I've just yes. dragged across? Okay, I'm now playing it. Great. So you see, it's very, very easy. You just position the plasterboard ceiling panel um, on the attachment. You push a button, the platform drives uh, overhead, and then the worker can lift uh, the, 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 the lift and position the plasterboard ceiling panel exactly where it needs to be and just drilling it uh, onto the ceiling. Um, the fact that not only this accessory makes uh, ceiling panel installation nearly effortless, but it's also very, very simple to mount and, and to remove it from the, for the platform. So leaving virtually no room for assembling error. On that, on our next slide, uh, particularly on this uh, Solo Gips and uh, Leonardo HD, we have a very interesting case study that we want to share with you. Next slide. <laughs> Are you sharing something, Marina? No, it's that you that you, you need to go to the next slide. <laughs> okay, all right. There we go. Sorry, there's a lot of noise in the background there. Okay. I'm uh, all alone in my office. <laughs> yeah. Great. So this case study, uh, I was saying that really shows how the so Leonardo and Sologips can enable interior fit-out industry to reduce installation time by 50% with no manual handling. Uh, this case study was uh, carried out at Midlands Metropolitan Hospital pro in, uh, project in Birmingham, and it was um, carried out in partnership uh, with Flynn Interiors, Balfour Biddy, Nationwide Platforms, and ourselves. And it really provi provides facts and figures on how beneficial this solution uh, can be. Uh, the contractor uh, in, on, on site uh, was looking for a solution to save time and resources while installing plasterboard ceiling panels in a context where um, it was vital for uh, the contractor to avoid two operators working on the same lift. But still, uh, once again, ensuring that you know, high level of productivity in congested working areas. To, to, again, to keep it up with the deadline. And as you can see, uh, you know, the, the results really uh, speaks for um, themselves. We are talking of uh, 50 panel sheets per day mounted by uh, just one operator against only 25, 30 sheets per day mounted by two workers uh, on a traditional scissor lift. I think that's nothing more to add, but uh, the, um, the workers on site also enjoyed uh, uh, the fact that the, uh, the unit being smaller, more maneuverable, uh, made it possible for them to uh, easily work also in very tight spaces and a lower entry step made it more comfortable to go on and off the platform all day. And I have one, la one uh, last example about what task-specific innovation uh, could, could bring to, to the industry. If we go to the next slide, um, once again, this, uh, I think this accessory, that's a prototype. It's still something that will be launched very soon over the next uh, few months. But I believe that this really shows how um, a, co a collaboration can deliver to the sector. Uh, this uh, is, um, is a solution to access very tight uh, ceiling grid. Again, uh, all, uh, it all started with a problem having uh, to face a, a challenge on site. And uh, the challenge was, was, was real. that They need to perform uh, uh, regular maintenance on uh, damper actuators. And these are, uh, and the, these are positioned underneath 
the, the ceiling grid. And although uh, part of the ceiling grid uh, uh, could be removed, uh, the support below the cable tray and the very limited space created a, a real, real constraint. Uh, only 40 millimeters uh, clear to the trim on the partition wall. So uh, what we did, we all pulled together uh, the contractor, nationwide platforms, and our engineering team. And we simply started bouncing ideas off each other until we get to, again, the, the right solution for that specific uh, task. And here we are with, uh, with this option. This is basically a extra, an extra basket uh, placed uh, within the, um, uh, the Leonardo HD platform. It's telescopic, uh, so it can be uh, returned into position when not in use, uh, not affecting the, the unit overall uh, dimension. It has a comfortable uh, foldable step, uh, and uh, uh, it provides access to a very, very tight ceiling grid, being only uh, the extra deck, being only um, uh, 500 millimeters wide and 350 millimeters long. Uh, with that extra height, you can uh, reach uh, a platform height of maximum uh, 3.6 meters. But of course, this can be reduced uh, uh, according to the exact ceiling height. Uh, so again, this is still a prototype, but I really think that shows that Whenever you have a challenge, whenever you have, you know, a situation where you don't, you don't know what is the right tool for the job, or maybe you, you know, you just need help, you can reach out to us. You can reach out to uh, the guys at Nationwide Platforms, and uh, they, we will listen, we will pay attention, and we will just, uh, we will just work together to find you the right solution for for the task. So um, as, as usual, I think I might have talked a little bit too much. <laughs> so over to you, Matt. Thank you, Marina, thank you. Uh, right, so just to summarize, we've talked about some of the, the, the risks um, and, and the risk of, of, of falls or entrapment or overturn is just as important as, as at low levels as it is at, at high level. You know, hopefully we've got that across. Hopefully we've shared some, some some methods of of selecting the right tool for task through that decision tree, tree through some of our insights into the benefits of, of low level access. Obviously we've talked about how things like your task and your demands on productivity drive the type of platform which is best for, for, for the job. Ground conditions definitely, space and control uh, as well as known risks uh, that, that some of these platforms are designed to, to to reduce, you know, and if you weren't aware of that, then great, you know, we, we've hopefully raised some awareness here. Um, Arena has very thankfully given us some insights into uh, a, a, an attachment which is already in the fleet, ready to go, uh, ready and available, as well as um, some bespoke uh, options that we're already working on, which everyone else can benefit from if they will but talk to us um, to, 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 to offer that. Uh, to, to, to those when you're working in the, some of those tight overhead spaces. And, you know, if I've not got this across before, you know, obviously there's the, the, there is the, the, the clear message there that we can help. Uh, and through engagement and understanding, you know, and, and, and having a supplier that's got the expertise, it's going to get you that, 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 that right solution. Because um, whilst people might think that these low level access platforms are a very simple go to, you know, um, you, you, you kind of know what you want to for every type of task, that they're not. You know, there is a method to go through to get to the best one, and we'd like to help you. Um, and I guess that finishes this off, really. Obviously, there's a formal Q&A, which hopefully there'll be some questions on, and which hopefully myself and Marina can answer. Um, we'd like to engage with you further if there's the opportunity, whether that be through technical guidance, uh, more information on products or site surveys. Uh, we'd like to set up some trials on solo chips, which is the, uh, the, the plasterboard manip manipulator um because we've only had it in the fleet for the last two months with any people in the uk to have that uh, and we think that's a, a real game changer but it just needs uh it needs some momentum out there with with as many interiors contractors as possible for you guys to see how and where this can help you um because it is with the, the the large overhead 
uh, ceiling panels where that comes into play. It's not for the small, you know, uh, tiles. It's for your your 30 or 40 kilo uh, overhead uh, sheets of gypsum, uh, which I see time and time again going up on, on plenty of construction projects, hospitals, offices, or wherever. Uh, and again, that's a solution that can help reduce risk, improve your productivity, and, and save you some money in the process. Um, there's obviously always more masterclass. There's always more webinars, webinars on different topics we do. So please, uh, you know, log on to the the website and find out what's else what else is coming. And if you need more information, clearly there's an email address there to, to contact us via. Um, so that's that really. Uh, Matt, is there any uh, is there anything that has been raised? Any questions we need to answer uh, from the from the talk? So we haven't had any questions through uh, so far, um, but I'll just give I'll just allow time um just while we do that i just wanted to mention to everybody that um the recording of this webinar will be going out later today um so please keep an eye on your inbox as, as that will arrive so i'll, I'll okay. just give you a few more seconds to pop some questions in no, it, it's all good i mean i'll ask some marina why not um uh, with with the, the the solo gypsum really we know 40 kilos is the is the top limit um yeah. What's the what's the what's the physical dimension that this uh, the, 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 this solution can take in terms of the panel size? The panel size can be uh, also the the extra one because uh, the cradle is extendable, so you can mm -hmm. fit the shorter and also the biggest one as long as the weight is not uh, um, over 40 kilo and also the um, uh, the width the thickness of the plasterboard. Uh, on the standard version, it needs to be around uh, uh, 20 uh, millimeters. So we, okay. we, we are working on uh, a cradle that will allow a uh, plasterboard with uh, a bit more thickness, but with a standard version, uh, we, we, that is, it, it is easily, the, the, I mean, the most common plasterboard ceiling panels would be uh, around uh, uh, that size. Okay, and what other materials have you had knowledge of being used on the solution? Is it just uh, gypsum, or is there other products, other material types that it could be uh, uh, utilized for? Well, I, I saw on site some um, uh, a few uh, using it for uh, uh, wooden uh, panel, you know, mm -hmm. the the light one, not of course the heavy one, but mostly a uh, plasterboard, mostly gypsum. Okay, all right. All right, excellent. And there was one other question which always gets asked uh, with me. How how do the materials stay on the attachment without falling off? What, what, what's the mechanism for keeping them secure through either elevation or when you're driving? What's the, the mechanism to keeping it secure? So if you are driving with uh, the board uh, placed uh, on the side, there's a clamp. Now we came up with a, with a clamp to secure the plastic board from falling off when uh, when driving, and the clamp uh, uh, automatically falls down as soon as the the plastic board panel reaches the overhead position. And right. again, also not only the clamp but also the cradle is not straight uh, vertically position; it's a bit inclined. So gravity will also mm, make sure that uh, the, the plasterboard panel will not fall off. So it leans towards yes. the platform, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. That um, and uh, also the clamp would the clamp. avoid yeah. uh, the plasterboard from, from falling off. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Matt, I presume is it, if there's any questions you would have piped up, so are we, are we good? We're good. We're good. Good. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Right, look, um, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there. Uh, Matt, Marina, if you want to stay on, uh, but thanks for dialing in, guys, and, and we'll see you hopefully in the next one. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for attending, everyone.